So before I went on holiday to Bodrum in Turkey, the day before I had and passed my AWS Cloud Practitioner Foundational Exam. And this was actually my first cloud certification as well. So in today's video, I'm going to share how I passed my AWS Foundational Practitioner Exam in just seven days of preparation, breaking the exam down, the resources I used, the exam mocks I took, and how I got myself prepared and ready, along with working out if certifications are actually worth taking. Before we get started, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into the video. I think the foundational exam costs around $100 and now with Solution Architect Associate, I'll get 50% discount off the exam, which will cost me around $75, which is great because that is the next certification that I'm going to be taking in a couple of weeks time. Now the professional and speciality exams are $300, but again, with the discount applied, these will cost you $150. So I highly, highly recommend starting with the foundational cloud practitioner exam first. Now the reason that I'm going for the AWS certification is because I've worked with AWS for a couple of years now and I thought it just makes sense to start getting the badges as well as the company that I work for are pushing everyone to gain certifications and then we're rewarded with some bonuses and also time off in annual leave. So it's just a win-win. Let's break the exam down. Now, AWS recommends a minimum of six months of general AWS cloud experience before you take this actual exam. I don't think that's really needed and even if you have no cloud or tech experience before, I think you can prepare and pass this exam in just a couple of weeks time. The exam format is 65 multiple choice questions and it's a 90 minute exam. You can take your exam in English, Japanese, Korean, or even Chinese. I took mine in Japanese and you need a score of 700 out of a thousand to pass. So 70% pass rate. I've got a score of 811, which is about 81%, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, prepping for this exam will give you a general understanding of AWS architectural principles, the value of AWS Cloud, key and important AWS services and their applications, the underlying security and compliance, and the shared responsibility model for security. And finally, you also get an understanding of cloud deployment and operating principles. There is also a lot about the AWS support plan levels. I think the four are basic, developer, business, and enterprise. And you need to know the differences between these and also what they offer from a service and support level agreement. This caught me out slightly as I haven't come across this before until I started preparing for this exam. Now, my exam strategy, because I had AWS experience before, I decided to take a slightly different approach. I thought, let me just take one mock exam to see what I already know and what I don't know, and then I can focus on the areas that I need to work on. Now, as always, I am quite quite a last minute person and I started my prep seven days before the actual exam. So the first mock that I took, I got about 52% and you need 70% to pass. So that gave me the confidence that I need to figure out that remaining 18% of the answers within just seven days. And that's what I did. Now, after my first mock, I made myself a notion page with all of the questions that I got wrong. And then every day I would go through my knowledge gaps, i.e. the questions that I got wrong and do an active recall and try and remember the answers. This worked so well as at the end, I took six mocks and I had like 60 questions that I got wrong from the 300 plus questions questions I took in the mocks. Now, I highly recommend that you take the same approach when you're taking these mocks. Make yourself a notes page and write the questions down that you got wrong with the answers, obviously, and force yourself to actively recall the answers. Remember, any exam is all about memorizing the answers. Now, let's talk about the resources that I use. Now, I know not everyone has AWS experience, so I'll suggest that you go to Udemy and buy Stefan Marek's AWS Cloud Foundational course. I'll drop a link in my description below. Stefan Marek is by far one of the best instructors out there and very highly rated. Now for the mocks, I also use another Udemy course, the CS Dojo AWS mocks. These mocks are actually much harder than the actual exam and also very similar to the exam as well. So definitely get yourself a Stefan Marek course and the CS Dojo mocks from Udemy. AWS also shares free exam guides, sample questions, official question sets, along with free digital training, exam readiness webinars, live Twitch training, and even an exam prep course squeezed in just three hours. 
So that's worth doing as well if you haven't got any AWX experience already. The CS Dojo mocks give you six mocks and I strongly suggest that you take these as many times as possible leading up to the exam itself and as close as possible to the exam as well. So you have a good breadth of questions that you've already taken and that will set you up nicely for the exam itself. The good thing about this exam is there is no practical questions that you have to go and set things up in the AWS console. Whereas with the AWS SysOps Associate, it's part hands-on and part multiple choice questions. Now let's talk about the exam itself. Now in the UK, you can take your exam with two different exam providers, Pearson and PSI. I use Pearson, it's what most people I know who took the exam use as well. I also took my exam at home rather than going to an exam center, but it's up to you. You can book to go to an exam center nearby or just take it from your home. Now during the exam, you can't read the questions out loud, so you have to be silent and read them in your head, which I guess is normal for any exam, but usually I'm definitely not an exam kind of person, but I felt quite confident going into this exam knowing I've been through over 300 different questions already. So again, taking those mocks and actively recalling the ones I got wrong helped me so much. I finished my exam in about 30 minutes and I went through the exam from start to finish. And then at the end, for some bizarre reason, I decided to go through the first couple of questions again. And then I thought to myself, hang on, I'm second guessing myself here. So I stopped. So I always go for your gut instinct and what question you think is right from the start, but make sure you read the questions properly. Now, the majority of questions were very similar to the CS Dojo mocks that I took, but there were some questions in there that I thought, you know, what on earth is this? And honestly speaking, I don't know why, but I felt like I failed the exam. So when I submitted my questions and and passed, I was like, are you sure I passed? Am I being pranked here? But no, I passed, which felt great. You get your AWS badge within 24 hours and you can slap it onto LinkedIn for everyone to like and congratulate you. Now, the big question is, are certifications worth it? Yes and no. Certs verify your understanding, but they don't actually prove that you can set up and configure things in AWS. The hands-on part of AWS is a whole nother ball game. I've seen a lot of people that have their AWS certifications and pass their exams really well, but when they need to build things and set things up in AWS, that's when they struggle. So really I'd say being able to use AWS properly and hands-on is way more important than passing these certifications. Now on the flip side, they definitely look good on your CV, especially if you want to become a freelancer or a contractor, then you should have these certifications which will help you stand out. Now my advice would be, depending on your role, right? If you're not an AWS engineer or an engineer in general, then actually being hands-on of AWS doesn't matter. But if you are an engineer, I'd say build a foundation first of using the console and then trying an infrastructure as code tool, such as Terraform, CloudFormation, or maybe even the AWS CDK. But again, for this exam, you don't need to be hands-on at all, but it definitely helps get you a better understanding of how to use the console and set things up in general. Now, the next steps for me is my plan is to go on and complete more AWS certifications due to the incentives at work. I'm going to complete all the associate levels, the solution architecture, sysops admin, and the developer associate level in the next month and then I'd like to go and try the security speciality. From here, I'll prepare the, for the pro level certifications, which are three hours long and the questions are super long as well. And obviously they'll be a lot more difficult, but yeah, certification goals for the rest of the year. And if I can complete all of these six certifications before 2023, then I'll be very happy and content with the progress that I've made. Now, let me know in the comments if you are thinking about taking any AWS certifications and how you're preparing for them. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.